In this presentation, we will be looking at contingent liabilities and the difference between GAAP versus the international standard. The two areas we'll be looking at is the effects of probability on whether a contingent liability is recorded under GAAP versus the international standard because they're different and the effects on an estimated range and what is recorded again the differences between what GAAP requires and what the international standard requires. Here are the rules. Under GAAP FASB ASC 450 they require that the accrual of a contingent loss when it is probable that a payment will be made. Since probably is not defined, it's a common practice to recognize contingent losses only if the probability is estimated at 70% or more. If there is a range for the estimated loss, then the lowest amount of the range is recorded. So these are the requirements under GAAP. Now the international standard has a different requirement for recording contingent liabilities. First of all, they have a lower threshold. All they require is that the likelihood is more than 50%. And if there is a range, then what they require you to do is take the lowest and highest, add them together, and divide by two to get an average, and that is the amount that you record. Now let's take a look at an example. And in this case, we have Mike Inc. is a foreign company owned by a U.S. company. And they must convert to GAAP because they're doing consolidated financials. And the situation is, in late 2017, Mike was sued by a competitor and management concluded there was a 60% probability that the company would lose the lawsuit. The best estimate, they didn't have a range, they just had an amount and it was 2 million rupees. In June of 2018, the lawsuit was concluded with Mike paying 3 million rupees. So now the question is, what would the journal entries have looked like on the books if you used the international standard versus use GAAP? And then what would be the working paper entries to record this difference? And the thing to remember here, whenever you're re reading these examples or doing your homework, you have to remember who's doing the conversion. Are you going from in this example, from the international standard to GAAP, or are you going from GAAP to the international standard? All right, under, again, under the international standard, we apply the greater than 50% rule. And in this case, since it's 60%, we have to accrue something in 2017. But under GAAP, you would apply the greater than 70% rule, so for them, if you were working with GAAP, you would record nothing in 2017. So what do the journal entries look like? Well, for 2017 under the international standard, they would have recorded a loss of 2 million rupee and set up a liability account for 2 million rupees. In under US GAAP, there would be no journal entry. Now what happens in 2018 when the payment is made for the 3 million rupees? Well, under the international standard, we have to record an additional 1 million rupees. But under the GAAP, because we record nothing, we've got to record the whole 3 million litigation loss in 2018. <laughs> so here are our journal entries again. Under the international standard, since we have already set up a provision for litigation loss of 2 million, in 2018, all we're going to record is the loss of 1 million. Under GAAP, we would record the whole 3 million, which tells me that when you do your working papers converting, you've got a $2 million difference in terms of what is going to appear. So, at the end of 2017, to convert from the international standard to GAAP, the first thing we need to do is back out the loss and take off the liability of 2 million rupees, which was the reserve that was set up under the international standard, but would not have been set up under GAAP. Now in 2018, what we need to do is we need to adjust 
And in this example, what we've got to do is since they've recorded just 1 million in 2018, what we have to do is record the other 22 million so that we now are complying with GAAP and the 2 million goes against retained earnings because it was recorded in the prior year. Now let's take a look at an example where you have a range. So again, Mike is a, in this case he's a U.S. company required for financials in according with GAAP. In late 2017, Mike was sued by a competitor and management concluded there was an 80% probability. So what that means is it doesn't matter which standard we're applying, international or GAAP, we have to record something because the probability is greater than the 70% set by GAAP. And in this case, we have a range. And the range is between 100 to 500,000. Now in the following year, they ended up having to pay 350,000. So now we're going to determine what would the journal entries would be, what would they be like under GAAP versus the international standard, and then what entries would be made on the conversion worksheets for GAAP and the international standard. All right, under GAAP, since the estimated probability again exceeds the 70%, we would be required to record a contingency. And since the range is between 100 to 500,000, the requirement is we have to record the lower range. So in that, in this example, in 2017, we would only record a loss for 100,000 and set up a liability account for 100,000. Now, under the international standard, again, since it, it, it exceeds their 50%, we have to come up with an average. And in our example, our average ends up being 300,000. So in this example, if we had been using the international standard, we would have had to set up a loss of 300,000 and a liability of 300,000. Again, we have a in this example we have a $200,000 difference. Now, what happens in 2018? Well, in 2018, since they only set up a $100,000 loss, they're going to have to record an additional 250,000 in 2018 and then pay it, but because our estimate was recorded at a higher level under the international standard, in that case, in 2018, we only had to record a loss of 50000 So now we can look at what do these working paper entries look like for 2017 and 2018. Okay, journal for the conversion worksheet to get to the international standard would include an entry to book the additional litigation loss which is the difference between the international, what the international standard required versus GAAP. So, and that, what that means is for 2017, we would have to book an additional 200,000, bringing it up to the 300,000 under the international standard and increase the liability account on the working papers. Now, when we get to 2018, what we have to do is we have to back out the 200,000 that they recorded in 2018 because under the international standard that would have been recorded in 2017 and we would make an adjustment to retained earnings. So that, those were examples of the differences for contingent liability gap versus the international standard.